Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of circles, specifically how we can describe the mathematical constant of pi, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So you see we've got three circles on the screen, and circles are not polygon. They are closed, but they do not have straight sides, and we really start exploring circles for, for the first time in 7th grade because there is this tricky little ratio that we need to make sure that we understand. So first, let's label the parts of a circle. So let's say that's our center. So a circle member is perfectly round, and all points on the circle are equidistant from the center. So anywhere I start from the center and draw to the side, if you draw a little half line right there, so this is going to be R, and R stands for our radius. So sometimes we are looking for the area and we might need to know what R is. And so that is going to be our radius. If we go from side to side through the center, now it needs to be through the center, right? We are going to have our D, our diameter. So as you can tell, our diameter is going to be twice as long as our radius because it goes from the middle to either side in a straight line. And then we've got our big number that we are going to need, and that is going to be our circumference. So the circumference, think of it like the perimeter around a circle. So our circumference is the length around a circle. Now, how do these interact with each other? Well, many, many thousands of years ago, a mathematician, Euclid, first proposed that we have a mathematical constant, and he labeled it with a Greek letter, pi. And he said that no matter what size circle you have, the circumference over the diameter stays exactly the same. So, for example, if we take this little circle right here and we say we have a diameter of, let's call it, 22 centimeters. So that's our D. D equals 22 centimeters. And let's say we get a string, and we get a string, and we can actually curve it, and we measure all the way around, because that diameter is not that difficult to measure. but our circumference is a little bit more difficult to measure. You can't measure it with a traditional ruler. You need something that curves. So our circumference is going to be 69 and 11 hundredths centimeters. So if we look at that ratio here, our pi is going to be about, now it's approximately 69 and 11 hundredths over 22, which is approximately 3.14. So when we're looking at our ratio here of pi, it's going to be approximately, that's why I've got the squiggly lines there, 3.14. In all actuality, pi, this ratio of circumference over diameter, doesn't ever end. It's an irrational number. It never repeats, and then digits go on forever. But it doesn't matter the size of the circle. So this smaller circle had this ratio of 3.14 about, but what if we looked at this larger circle and we gave it some dimensions? And so this is larger, we're gonna use a different unit, so let's say this is 25 inches, and we know that our circumference is going to be about, so we're getting to approximately 78 and 54 hundredths. Well, if we were to look at that, our circumference, over our diameter. So let's say that 78 and 54 hundredths over 25. If you were to divide up to get just a regular number, you would get about 3.14. So it doesn't matter how big or how small, as long as it is a pure circle. That means each point in the circle is equidistant from the center, right? It's not an oval or anything the circumference over the, over the diameter will equal this constant that we call pi. 